from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tie Cats Today, right here on the Tie Cats Audio Network for this Friday, August 11th, 2023. Joining me now is defensive end Anthony Federico. Anthony, thanks for joining me today, man. How you doing on this mm. uh, on this bye week? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on today. Now, how has the bye week been going for you? What have you been up to? Are you are you training during the bye week, or is it time to kind of rest and and just relax a bit and get ready for that next week? It's all about like relaxation, you know. Yes, you keep your body going though. So I've been training throughout the entire bye week, you know, enjoying this time with some family, some friends, some loved ones. Um, kind of just enjoying the week, you know, relaxing a bit and just staying in the weight room. Now. One thing that guys like to do in their spare time, a lot of guys say they watch Netflix. Some guys play video games. What are you doing like in particular? Are you watching shows? Are there any shows or video games that you're that you're into during uh during your downtime? Yeah, like I'm a big Netflix guy. Like I love watching TV shows, love watching series. Um, I'm really into this one right now. It's done by Apple TV. It's called Hijack. Okay. It's like big like um airplane hijack. Uh there's a bunch of stuff going both in the air and on the ground. It's a big mystery. I'm pretty dialed in on it right now. It's a they release episodes every week, so yeah, it's it's, it's a good one right now. I, I'm I've got to check that one out. I haven't heard of that. App, Apple TV's got some good shows though. There's a there's a ton. I'm a big Crave guy. I find there's a lot on the HBO there, so that's kind of what I'm tuning into now. What I want to do today is go through your career a little bit. I know we've done it in the past, but but I kind of want to go through a career. You're from Niagara Falls. I live there myself. I know it's kind of a sneaky kind of place for football players for talent and it's a big football city in a weird way and the high schools are very competitive just how did you get into football uh, in Niagara Falls yeah it's you know it, it breeds a lot of great talent you know yeah all of southern Ontario you know it's, it's it's a good spot for football players to come out of um the way I kind of got into football uh basically just you know just in my neighborhood you know I grew up with a lot of kids um in my neighborhood that love sports just as much as me and my brothers did so as soon as we get off the bus uh, after school, we'd all get in the front lawn and start throwing the football around. Uh, around like grade one, grade two, like that's when we'd start just going out there, hitting each other. Uh, every single day, it'd be a new sport. You know, it'd be football, basketball, baseball, hockey, whatever it was. Every single night, we were out there until the streetlights came on. Uh, and then once the opportunity came where, you know, I could finally sign up for football, uh, my parents uh, thankfully put me in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the rest is history. And then, so you have a tremendous high school career in Niagara Falls. You go to Queens, you play at one, decide to play at Richardson Stadium, become a Gale, and play in one of the nicest uniforms, I think, by the way, in all of you sports, I, I have to say. It. But what was the decision like to go to Kingston and go to school and play football at Queens University? Yeah, I knew uh, coming out of college, you know, I had a little bit of a different route than a lot of other guys who go right to university. So I had to go you know, play semi-pro football. I played with the Hamilton Hurricanes for two years. Uh, and then I had the opportunity to go to Queens. And I knew going into Queens, you know, at the time, you know, Pat Sheen was the head coach. Uh, it was a guy I really wanted to go play for. Um, and then Ryan McManus was our defensive coordinator uh, my entire time there. And that was a guy, you know, I would do anything for. He was a great guy, great coach, and someone who would always be there for you on and off the field. Uh, and then luckily, you know, in my second year, we got Steve Snyder mm -hmm. and he was another immaculate coach in my development, uh, someone who pushed me every single day and someone I'm truly thankful for. Now, Queens University is 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 a legendary kind of place to play. It has a lot of history there. Did you feel that history while you were playing at a university like that? And and what was the rivalry like between you and Western? <laughs> It's a big rivalry, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't get any wins under my belt, but you know, this year the squad's looking really good, um, and I think we're going to push for that Yates Cup victory this year. Uh, but yeah, history's—you know—it's embedded in us. You know, we talk about it the first day you get on campus. You understand about kind of like what we do here with the Tie Cats. You you understand like the shoulders that stood before you, and uh, you know we take a, a good look at the people who came before us and the uh, legendary uh, stats that they put up and the amazing things they did they, they did for the program and now you go from queen's university one historic university to a historic franchise in the cfl the hamilton ticats a place that's not too far away from home for you what was it like getting drafted and, and when did it kind of become on your radar that you were going to be a high pick you go in the second round yeah honestly i didn't know coming in draft night i didn't really know where i was going 
Um, but, but you know, the, that entire process was just like a legit dream come true. You know, you work your, your, your butt off and to be able to get called by your hometown team, uh, it's a legit a dream come true. I, I'll never forget, you know, draft night, I had all my uh, friends and family with me uh, at a local restaurant in Niagara Falls and you just watch the screen and hear your name get called up is something I'll never forget. And I'll always cherish. Was it kind of in conversation? Did you have talks with the tie cats beforehand or, or was it just, let's just see where I go tonight? Um, no, we had some interviews beforehand. Um, but yeah, like leading up, you know, no, no team really gave me the old, uh, I'm going to take you here. I'm going to take you there. I, I was, I didn't really know where I was going, but you know, at the end of the night, I was just like, I'm going to go somewhere and I, I can't wait. And I was just lucky enough to you know, go to my number one spot that I want, always want to go to. I, I want to get a first, your first ever moment that you can remember in the CFL coming into a game, whether it be on the sidelines, going out the tunnel, whatever it may be. I've heard some funny stories from a few guys like Gordo told me he got lit up on his first ever play in the CFL. So, so what was your first I'm in the league moment? I think just running out of the tunnel, honestly, you know, that first preseason game I ever played in just like, I'm pretty sure it was almost a sold out crowd crowd about two years ago. And to, you know, come out with the smoke and you just hear all the fans take your helmet off. And it's just like, you're looking around you're like, oh my God, there's around 25,000 people, you know, like screaming right now. It's the biggest crowd I ever played in my entire life. And it just became so surreal after that. And what is that Thai Cats crowd like to play in front of? It's, it's, I, I feel like there's not very many crowds in the league like it, but what is it like as a player to play in front of this fan base here in Hamilton? It's the best, honestly. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, you know. It's a, it's, a, it's a reason why this dream is so awesome to be living in right now. Like, you have fans that care. You have fans that keep you accountable, you know. Seeing those fans in the stands every game, is it means a lot. Yeah, like, they're the best fans in the entire, you know, nation. Um, and I'm truly thankful to be playing in front of them. I'm going to fast forward now to this season, sitting at three and five. Obviously not what the team wants at this point. It's still early on-ish in the season, and it's not like you're that far out of it. What do you think needs to be done as we approach this second half of the season here, maybe to to get the ball rolling a bit, get some more wins under the belt? You know, I I honestly, we have everybody we need, you know, from top down, you know, we have everybody in, the, in, in that building that, you know, we need. And every guy in that locker room believes in what we can achieve. And, you know, we know what the goal is. Every single guy who comes and punches in in the morning knows what the goal is. We just got to keep believing and keep pushing through, you know. The, the boat is turning, you know, we are turning. Um, it's just a process. Football is a process. And we all just got to believe in the process. And we all know, you know, once you believe in the process, you trust the process, good things are about to happen. No, I agree. And I, I feel as though this team has so much talent on this roster. And and I think there's there's a good chance we see a big second half here. Now, Anthony, do you have any other plans for the rest of the bye week? What are you up to? Um, I'm off to the county fair, actually, today. We're, uh, okay. Me and my girlfriend, we're going out to uh, the Erie County Fair, just right outside Buffalo. Yeah. Going to go see a little bit of rodeo, uh, see some pig races, um, and just go enjoy some downtime. Well, that sounds great, Anthony. I appreciate you joining me today, man, and you uh, enjoy the rest of your bye week, and I look forward to seeing you back at Tim Hortonsville, buddy. Hey, thank you so much for having me on today, man.